Today we will talk about a better approach on how to plan our astro images, specifically on how to use Stellarium to plan these images. And trust me, once you've done that for the first time, there's hardly any going back. My name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. Here we have this beautiful piece of software. For everybody new, Stellarium is a free planetarium in which you can view the night sky from all locations and times. This will not be a tutorial on how to use Stellarium, I just want to introduce some important features. And the first and probably most important is Oculars. The location right now is set to Frankfurt, Germany. Small fun fact, the landscape you see right here is close to a small village in France, which name I will not pronounce, because I can only screw it up. This is where the developer says Stellarium was born, which is really cool even though this small shed or barn is not there anymore. Which is really sad. To use the Oculus plugin, it's a plugin, it may not be in the startup of Stellarium. Let's first make it night, I will use the hotkeys to fast forward the day. Beautiful. Let's maybe look to the south, we can see a lot of things here already. Typically, the Oculus plugin will be visible in the top right corner. As you can see, there's nothing over here in my case. If you don't see anything in the top right, you have to go into the configuration window, plugins, and we will scroll down until we see Oculus. You click load and start up, and restart the software. Now you can see the top right a few buttons to click. I will first click on the wrench to set some settings. I will only take a look in this case since I am into deep sky astrophotography. I will not care about eyepieces or lenses. I will care about sensors and telescopes. In the sensors tab you see a pretty big list on many things you can choose. I typically go ahead and delete all of these to set my custom sensors. But in this case I have my EOS 6D Mark II, which I sometimes use outdoors for the astrophotography sessions. I now have the option to choose this, you can click add and add your own sensors, if you have maybe a dedicated astro camera, which is not listed here. Under telescopes you can see all different kinds of telescopes. And same as usual, you can enter your own here. Let's maybe, we have photo lenses here, maybe use some of these as examples. With all those set, I will now press F3 and we will look for a target to shoot. I recently looked for the Lobster Claw Nebula, but let's go casual. Andromeda Galaxy. And here it is. It's upside down. Well, to me it looks upside down. And now, in the top right you see three other buttons. We go on the circle with the rectangle in it, which is the sensor. The red outline you see right here will be the exact field of view of your system. Right now it is set, we are using an EOS 450D and a generic telescope 700mm focal length. And now I can pan around in here and maybe look for a better composition in my image. This is what Oculus is for, create the best composition for your astro images. You can of course put Andromeda Galaxy in the center of the frame, but that may look casual almost, I think. We... there's another satellite going through. We can click through the sensors, maybe use a Nikon D3, and maybe another telescope, a photo lens, and we are much further out now. In the case of Andromeda Galaxy, this seems not really necessary to frame this properly, but let's maybe search for the bubble nebula and it will become much more apparent how many things can be in a single image. We have the bubble nebula, a star cluster, a supernova, the... I think it's the northern lagoon nebula, I think it's called? Let me put on the names here. It is. And now there is so much in this image we need to frame this properly. I will click this again, maybe switch back to our telescope. We now may want the bubble nebula not in the center, but maybe the supernova, this cluster, the nebula. We can now maybe pause the time, pan around and most importantly, change the rotation of our camera sensor. 
And now you can play around and search for your own specific composition. And the most interesting thing about this, you can read off the coordinates of the center of this rectangle. And in my case, I read the coordinates and the rotation. I enter them in APT, my imaging software. And via plate solving, I will be right on spot and the composition of this image will be perfect. Now, since we know how to frame our objects, I want to do that on a very beautiful nebula. I recently took an image of the Lobster Claw Nebula and it was quite a blast. I search for Lobster Claw Nebula and here it is. Yes, here it is. The problem is not every deep sky object has a dedicated image in Stellarium. But we can change that. Tip number two. At first we go again into the configuration and you see I'm already in the tab extras. We have the button DSS survey. Activate that and you will have a new button in your toolbar over here. Digitized sky survey. And I, I think I said this before but I don't know which hotkey is called toast. We click that and magic is about to happen. Because this button replaces the entire background of Stellarium with the original digitized sky survey. I think it's done by the ESO, the European Observatory. As I zoom out you can maybe see some errors in mosaicing and sometimes we see artifacts from shooting images but that's really not a problem. We go back on the Lobster Claw Nebula and here it is, it exists. And together with Oculus, we can use the sky survey to frame this image much, much better, just as I did in my own shot of this region. The last thing I want to talk about, I sadly can't show you, because I lack the actual skill to do it. We can also switch this foreground to a different location. We go into sky viewing options, landscape, and now we have a beautiful view from the ESO in Germany, close to Munich, and this wonderful field in the foreground. And also, which is very funny, I can also set the location to some trees. And this is the main catch of the third tip. Many of us have obstructions like this in our backyards, or from, or from whatever location we shoot. Planning your nights with Stellarium, with maybe the field in France, easy, but it's not like that in real life for most of us. There are two solutions to this problem. The first one, you spend money on bombs, chainsaws and lawsuits. And the second, much more boring one, we use a custom landscape in Stellarium. I was not able to get this working, mainly because I lacked the skill to create a 360 panorama from my backyard. Even Photoshop couldn't do it, I don't know. If you want to get it done, I leave you with the beautiful videos from Sean Nielsen and Martin Cohen. They have two beautiful videos on this topic and you should definitely check them out. And now all we have to do is to use this knowledge to get more beautiful images of our night sky. And all you need for that are clear skies and may the night be with us.